Good afternoon, lovely people. How are you all doing today? I hope you're well. I'm coming to you through the beautiful English lavender. Isn't it gorgeous? So, let's get some of it out of the way a little bit. This is a continuation of the day that you saw in my last video when I was down here getting my cucumbers and my peppers in. And do you know what? It's such a beautiful day. I do not want to go home. I just don't want to go home. It's beautiful for so many reasons. When I first arrived, oh, a few hours ago, there was no one else here. It was lovely, I had the whole site to myself. It was so quiet. I love those moments. <laughs> it's not so quiet now, is it, with the plane? But yeah, it's lovely to have those quiet moments to myself. But as the afternoon's worn on, so many more folk have been getting down here and it's, you know, it's all my favourite people. Everyone's my favourite people, but it's just so lovely to see everyone. Um, and, you know, Kai's been hopping around, getting everyone, doing everyone's portraits. We've just done mine. It just adds another wonderful, lovely, interesting texture to the day. Um, so not only is it a beautiful day and I want to stay because... The sun's out, my friends are out, but I know we seem to have been talking about it for weeks now. We are, apparently, we are definitely going to be having a lot of rain tomorrow and possibly for a few days. So there are a couple of jobs I want to do and they're the kind of jobs that I should ideally do before rain. So I'm just going to make the most of this see this can you see the young escape is right next to me oh beautiful absolutely laden with pollen I so want to stoke its lovely furry bottom and here oh <laughs> he was on my nose and here comes another oh that one's gone for a drink um yeah so I'm just gonna make the most of this absolutely beautiful in so many ways day and carry on with the jobs I think, I don't know whether to do the tough job first, yeah I think I will, so the tough job, the first job is going to be to lift my garlic and that's what I mean about wanting to get things done before the rain, I need to lift it before the rain because otherwise it will start to rot, so come on, let's get a fork, <sighs> I've got a feeling it's going to be like trying to get them out of concrete. Let's do some garlic archaeology. Oh, this ground is like rock. So, <laughs> that has just lifted a great big slab up. Now, ideally, I would have done this probably about two weeks ago. So over the years, what I've found is um, I've been harvesting a week earlier each year, each year, each year to get to the point where I can harvest before the rot appears. And that's generally been the last, uh, the last week of May. Now, the other thing about getting these out today, <laughs> I can get them out, is this is going to open up the ground a little bit that hopefully all that rain that we do oh, can get in there and soften it a little bit so that when I come to plant it with uh, what's going in here at this end I'm going to have the Hungarian pepper that end the flint horn so yeah hopefully it'll just soften it enough for me to have a hope and hack of actually being able to plant small but perfectly formed and absolutely gorgeous smelling. Oh, is there anything more gorgeous than this, than this smell of garlic straight out of the ground? Oh, maybe a tomato that's been in the sun all day. Oy vey! Yeah, I'm just looking at each one uh, as I'm taking them out just to make sure 
There's no sign of the rot. So far, so good. Actually, I'm going to give you a. I'm going to bring you around here and give you a closer look at this, at this uh, concrete that they're set in. You can actually probably get a sense of just how bone dry we are by the sound of my footsteps up and down the path. I sound more like I'm in, I don't know, Greece, somewhere in the Mediterranean than I sound like I'm in London. I mean, look, it's just, it's heaving up. Look at that. It's, I'm, oh wow, it's so baked. So yeah, I'm gonna stick the fork in all over and then hopefully the rain can get in. But, like I say, they are small, but they're beautifully formed. And the two or three that I've had out already have tasted utterly magnificent. Oh, I can't even, there's one here, it's half out. <clears throat> oh, goodness me. And when you consider, um, when the ground was really quite wet back in, oh, when was it? February or so. Oh yes, it was February. The ground is quite wet and I gave it a top dressing of chicken poo and then immediately got quite a thick, heavy mulch of these leaves on it. But even so, wow, it's so, so dry. I wonder if I'm gonna be able to get the spots out even. Oh, can I get my fork in even? <laughs> I'm talking of even. Goodness me, well I think, I think this is going to take me a little while, oop no, I missed the barrow, so I suggest that you all go off and um, pour yourselves oh, a nice long cold drink <laughs> and join me when I've got them all out, oh I think I've lost the end of that one somewhere down there, yep. Go and get yourself some nice cold drink and I'll see you back here shortly. nearly there but my goodness look at the state of this ground ah oh, that's not a fit of a planting anything into oh please 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 let's hope we get that rain because that will help okay let's get these back to the shed for drying Oh, 
hardest garlic harvest I've ever had. Not in terms of getting the vegetables to grow, but getting them out of the ground, my goodness. Honestly, that, that was horrid. That was really horrid. And um, it just kind of uh, leaves me a bit worried about getting that bird planted up with the next bits because I mean, I could barely get my fork in, as you could see. Um, getting the hook in and great slabs were coming up. And, you know, that bird, it's had loads of compost added in the last couple of years. It had that much. Never mind. Oh, it's just taking the wind out of myself. You know, I was saying about do the worst job first. Well, I'm glad I've done that. It's done. It's out of the way. These are almost dry already because we've been so dry but I'll now <clears throat> get them into the shed onto my onion drying rack I'm gonna have a sit down for two minutes and then uh, do something a bit more fun I'm gonna do some planting in a minute <sighs> Bye, heck. gosh this auction is disappearing at an alarming rate <laughs> right so in here <clears throat> Oh, that's a tiddly one. <clears throat> Let me show you. I've got my adopters. <clears throat> Woohoo! <laughs> These two have become very attached. They like each other. What? Oh, have a wee butchers at those. Uh, look, look, can you see how it's uh, doing, doing, doing? So, um, they look like such spindly um, sad little things don't they but amazingly this is how the one that I did direct last year looked to begin with so I reckon I've got I've got two smaller ones I'm going to keep as spares or probably give to someone else but I thought you know what I might as well just get these in the ground now because I'm gonna have a bit of a <laughs> plant tetris as I keep saying now it's my new favorite phrase I'm going to have a plant tetris in the cold frame. Um, I'm going to whip the shading off for now just so I can see properly what I'm doing. But as part of that, I'm just going to check through what's left to plant out into the garden. I've got a good idea, including my gorgeous Hungarian peppers, which will go in the ex garlic bed, although goodness knows when and how I'm going to get that prepared bed prepared anyway so let's uh doing 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 i think i'm going to leave them attached but yeah let's get these planted and um introduce them to the big wide world i'm aware that this looks like a pretty dark bleak horrid corner for them but that's because we've just gone we're, we're in full shade by this time of the afternoon to give you an idea it's gone six o'clock now so my head, <laughs> it's just coming over the top of the fence to my head. So yes, it is dark at the moment, but uh, it gets full sun until, so right from the morning, right through till about three o'clock in the afternoon. So it's, it's absolutely fine. And the fact that I grew one here last year, I know that in theory, I should be able to grow another one this year. So where that little, seedling is I'm going to leave that in if it wants to come to something it will um yay right I wasn't going to separate them is that a bit of oh no it's just a lump of oh there might be a stone um let's see if I can do this without actually separating them because they seem quite happy together and then what I'll do is I will whoop la I'm going to get another couple of poles but much longer ones so that they've got because they've reached they've reached the top of these ones <laughs> yeah oh can I separate yeah I'll I'll get some um, longer poles pointing at the fence so that they point all the way to the top of the fence and then once they get to the top of the fence they can go onto the wires. Just shove all that. This is all round down here. I've got sort of where I, I did all that strimming of all the leaves and I've pulled twigs and things out. I've just been leaving them in a 
pile here and actually they're sort of they're decomposing and I've got some nicer soil underneath so yeah let's get in some bigger poles and I think I really need to put a slug trap down here because because it is a slightly darker damper area of the garden I'm pretty sure that this is slug heaven and these are such tender little plants um, I'm sure they'll be very attractive so yeah let's go and get a beer trap on the go I hope if nothing else you're all enjoying this beautiful quality of light at this time of day great so I've got all sorts of odd bits and bobs of spares that's some oops, Chadwick cherry tomatoes a rubbish carnival squash this was one of the ones that over Easter weekend decided to just make a run for it and then stopped but you just never know and I don't know about you guys but oh I just I just can't bear to throw any seedlings away while there's any sign of life in them um, because you never know it may come good and then there may be someone on my site who, who loses everything and they would be grateful even for a slightly more weedy veg. This is one of the spare achocha. So I'm going to get this tray or plant cleared because I've got all my brassica cells to go in. What's this? Ah, this is some of the, that's the Hungarian peppers. And they're beautiful, gorgeous colour. See it in the light. Oh, beautiful. So yeah, these <laughs> what's supposed to be going into that garlic bird? Oh goodness knows. So they can pop right down at the front here for now. And then oh that needs to go on the other side. So look carefully does it. Because now into here. Do you remember all those cells of brassicas I had that hadn't germinated? Oh, I'm about to tip them all out. Well, they've only gone and germinated. Oh, look at the size of them. So these are really, really going to need pricking out um, in the next few days. A couple more down that end. So obviously I pricked out my main ones. Oh, clap. Oh, sorry, excuse backside shots. Yeah, I picked out the main ones about three weeks or so ago now. Um, but again, because these were just germinating, so I couldn't bear to chop them. And it's great because then, you know, if, if I get any damage, I'll have replacements. And like I said, even if, even if I don't need them, I'm sure there will be someone on site who does. Like, for instance, the other day I was mentioning, I was mentioning the, um, we've got a, a couple of ladies came to look at a plot and they're going to take it on, but it's a really tricky time of year to be, to be given a plot, to get a plot at this time of year because obviously there's going to be a lot of work for them to do to prepare that plot. They obviously won't have started any seeds, even at home, you know, because they don't know they're going to get a plot. So it's really lovely, and we should all think about this, if we can all grow just one or two extras of everything, so that A, we could help our friends out if they have a disaster, and B, if we get someone new on site, we can give them a little starter set of veggies. Yay! Right, ah, I'm going to move those peppers. It's a hoopla. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a day for just having a little recce and reckoning of, of what's left, what's to go in. That is. Oh, sorry, sorry Janet. It's all right, no, it's just blind to pass the sidewalk. That's some more of the paprika, as I was just showing you in there. These ones that are tucked in here. That's my Doulong de Londe, the gorgeous Frenchies. 
and then just tucked in this corner. I'll show them to you close up because it's a bit of a disaster. I've got, um, hang on a sec, come around. I've still got, ooh, I've got a spare loofah and, oh, a couple of spare peppers. But look at this. This is a rose de bain. It's doing nothing. And this is one of those little petit pois rouge. I don't know if you remember. I was so sowed these obviously back in March from saved seed. This was saved from seed from a plant that one of my neighbours gave me last year. I was very grateful for it. It was really prolific and I thought brilliant. Saved the seed. It's done nothing. It's been like that for oh two months. Ridiculous. Likewise the Rose de Bern. Now last year the Rose de Bern were really tiddly. I put them in the ground and they finally got going. So I'm just going to have a think in the next couple of days about where to put this. I'm, what I'm thinking is if there's gaps in the chickpea bed, where I've got gaps in germination, then it will most, almost certainly go in there, which will be something of a repeat of last year because I seem to remember my chickpea bed ended up being an extension of the tomato beds last year. Right, good. Now, last job, well not last job, but last job for the cold frame is I need to go and get all the trays of the brassicas that I did prick out, um, get those in here to give them all a good watering, which seems which seems silly. The reason I'm putting them in here is so they don't drown in the rain out there tomorrow, but I really want the potato trenches to get a soaking too. So yeah, I'll get all those in here too, and then see how much energy I've got to tackle another little job. Gosh, so much for getting the cold frame empty. So now you can see that's all the brassica seedlings, the second lot that have come up. They weren't second sowing, first sowing, but they germinated late. They all need pricking out. And then I've got all the gorgeous brassicas here that I did get pricked out down at that end that's all the peppers and spare squash and then down here yep yeah, more brassicas more brassicas and then my little odds and odds and sods of a couple of spare peppers a cocha lufa stunted uh rose de burn etc so well it's a good job i did get all the planting done this week that i wanted to because uh, otherwise I'd have had no space for that little lot. Oh, the love in a mist. Oh, it's so lovely. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Yeah, but the light is definitely getting lower now. Oh, that's a nice view, isn't it? That's, you know, I always talk about this colour of green that I love. Well, this absolutely sort of this is, I was going to say personifies it, it's not a person, but you know what I mean. Yes, so, like I said, the sun is dipping, my limbs are weary, I've been picking my sweet peas to make more flowers come. Oh, goodness me, it's been a long but fantastic day. Hello, tripod. I feel like I've managed to do loads, even though it doesn't necessarily look like it. <laughs> garden is still showing a lot of brown patches isn't it but oopla it's it's getting there and let's face it all of these beds they're all sown they're all planted all we're waiting for now is a wee drop of rain oh, please please say that we get it Look how dry it is, my goodness. Right, I'm going to turn you back into the sun for a second, just to look down the garden. I just love this time of day down here. I love this quality of light. Beautiful. Right, well, it's nearly seven o'clock and I've still got all the watering to do. Plus, I need to tidy up after myself. So I think I'd better call it quits, hadn't I? Oh, yes, definitely need to call it quits. 
Oh, just one this last look at the lettuces. <laughs> Hello, lettuces. Right, prepare to spin. <clears throat> Oop. Very, very happy person. Very happy. Look, there's no doubt about it. The last three days, well, three days in the garden, but done over the course of four days. I wasn't here for one of the days. It's been a bit of an effort. At times it's felt like a bit of a chore and I like, sort of, you know, there've been times I was thinking, oh, for goodness sakes, I just want to sit in the garden and enjoy it. But the fact is, it's been so worth it because now, really, all the big stuff's done. I still need to harvest the broad beans and that's where the cocoa de pampol will be planted. I've got a feeling the soil in that bed may be just as dreadful as the garlic bed was. But this rain, this rain, this rain, oh, if it comes. Look, the rain that we're due, it should help you know, with all those things. So, um, not, not going to concern myself overly with any of that. It's time to actually start to just enjoy this garden. Oh. So, just a quickie today. <laughs> Wasn't a quickie for me, a quickie for you. I hope by now that those of you who've been having chilly days and rain, 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 oh, for goodness sakes, I hope that's over now and you're getting some decent weather for you to get into your gardens to do your catching up. And for those of you like us who've had drought for weeks on end, hopefully by the next time I see you, I'll be doing a giddy dance because we'll, we'll have had rain. <laughs> I'm obsessed with the rain. Right, well on my obsessed about the rain note, I'm going to bid you all a very happy cheerio and I will see you all again really soon I hope. In the meantime, take care of yourselves.